of it's hour number three. Big news blitz coming up in the last half hour. Wayne Madsen of WayneMadsenReport.com is our guest. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.net. What is the Endgame.com and JonesReport.com? Wayne Madsen uh, is a D.C.-based investigative journalist. I know whenever I'm watching Intelligence Committee hearings, I can look in the background in the press gallery and see him there on C-SPAN. He's an author and syndicated columnist. He's written for The Village Voice, The Progressive, Counterpunch, Online Journal, Corp Watch, Multinational Monitor, News Insider, American Conservative, Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Columbus Dispatch, Sacramento Bee, Houston Chronicle, Herald, Miami Herald. And he's the author of the best-selling uh, Personal Data Protection, London Macmillan, an acclaimed reference book on international data protection law, Genocide and Covered Operations, Co-author of America's Nightmare. He's a regular contributor on NBC, CBS, PBS, Russia Today, BBC, Al Jazeera, MSNBC. He, of course, worked with a U.S. Naval officer, managed the first uh, computer security programs for the U.S. Navy. He subsequently worked for the National Security Agency and Naval Data Automation Command, Department of State, RCA Corporation, Computer Science Corporation. He's a senior fellow with Electronic Privacy Information Center, EPIC. A privacy public advocacy group, Madsen is a member of the Society of Professional Journalists, an association of intelligence officers, and the National Press Club. And I spent a lot of time reading much of his bio because we don't normally do that. He's specifically uh, uh, well vetted and and has a lot of gravitas on not just the NSA Homeland Security Cybersecurity Takeover that's passed committee now going to the full Senate, but WikiLeaks and black ops and dirty tricks and, and basic sneakiness. And so we're going to break here in three minutes, but Wayne, we can talk about what this, what these reports look like to you, how they may use it to censor the Internet, what you think of WikiLeaks. Uh, you've got the floor. Let's, let's go over it. Well, Alex, uh, I, I, what I've seen with the, uh, what the reporting, uh, these 90,000 uh, uh, documents are, they're, the highest classification is secret. Uh, now, we know that the intelligence community is over-classifying things. So, really, what do we have here? Do we have anything that's really earth-shattering, or do we have something that uh, probably could be found uh, on, a, on the front page of any daily newspaper? Uh, we, know, we know that from uh, these uh, leaked uh, documents that the, the, there's a mess in Afghanistan and Pakistan. Well, we already knew that. We knew that from... Ambassador Carl Likenberry's cables back to uh, Washington to the State Department that stated that, you know, backing this guy, Hamid Karzai, is, is, a, is a total uh, disaster. Um, and um, so what do we know that's new? What we have here are three newspapers selected for these leaks, the New York Times, the Guardian in the U.K., and Der Spiegel in Germany, and I think all three uh, are problematic when it comes to leaks. Because these are well-known papers that work like hand in glove with intelligence. Absolutely, and we know that Der Spiegel, for example, is pushing for the war against Iran. Uh, they supported the United States in the uh, Russian war uh, in South Ossetia against uh, Georgia. Uh, we know that The Guardian has uh, some links to George Soros. There's, and again, we know that Soros and his uh, friends like Cass Sunstein are big promoters of WikiLeaks. Which is bizarre because we've got Sunstein saying censor the Internet. This looks like it could be their excuse. But that's what I noticed yesterday and today reading these articles is notice they're saying, oh, look, it shows that Pakistan's helping the Taliban right as the West wants to go into Pakistan and admits we have special forces on the ground. So it's very suspicious. Wayne Madsen, stay there. Let's come back and go over all of this and talk about the fact that these communiques, 92,000 of them, are in digital format. Uh, so we'll discuss it all straight ahead with Wayne Madsen. I'm Alex Jones. You're listening to the GCN Radio Network. GCNlive.com is the website. All right, investigative journalist Wayne Madsen has worked with the NSA, written for some of the biggest newspapers in the country, is our guest. Bottom line, we're only a few days into this WikiLeaks situation. Uh, reportedly documenting massacres in Afghanistan, but that's already been in the news. Uh, from your well-researched position, what do you bottom line think's going on here, Wayne? Well, uh, 
there's a, a number of uh, journalists, uh, long-time journalists in Washington, who are very suspicious of the motives behind WikiLeaks and, and these uh, so-called leaks. Um, we, uh, uh, you know, it's clear that uh, WikiLeaks has been engaged in a big fundraising operation, and um, uh, the, uh, the John S. Knight Foundation actually turned them down for a grant because they just didn't think that they passed the smell test. And as I say, there's many people. First of all, the job of any journalist is to protect their sources. Now, this guy, this Army private who supposedly leaked some of this information to WikiLeaks, he was outed by a guy out of San Francisco who had a, a relationship with WikiLeaks, uh, who's an, uh, a former computer hacker. Assange is a former, uh, Julian Assange is a former hacker. Now, all this goes back to the 1980s and uh, 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 the, the computer hacking on uh, defense computer systems, which I was involved with from the government side. Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, we have these guys pop up again. Uh, they, they had, uh, this, this group, uh, one of the groups was the Chaos Computer Club out of Hamburg, Germany. Uh, they did real damage to national security. So um, I, I think it's significant. Today is the anniversary of the 1988 uh, Internet worm launch uh, that was launched uh, on the Internet, brought down a lot of computer systems, defense, government, uh, corporate uh, computers. And the guy who released it, Robert Morris Jr., released that worm from Cornell University. His father was the chief scientist for the National Security Agency. Now, everybody at the time uh, was of the opinion that this is obviously just an experiment by NSA to pulse the net to see how vulnerable it was to this type of uh, malicious software. And that's case. where you, that's, that's exactly where I was going. And, and perhaps WikiLeaks, if this is the case, doesn't know uh, that they're uh, being used. But you notice that right as they're trying to pass cybersecurity, it's passed the Senate committee now to admittedly take over the web, funnel everything through the NSA, to gatekeep and to surveil. Right as this happening, we've seen the last year, cybersecurity command that's already been set up and operating, the Air Force has said, we're going to launch attacks on ourselves to test this. Uh, and now they're trying to use this as a way to say, oh, we've got to start gatekeeping the web to stop security leaks like this. I mean, I just see the timing of all of this uh, you know, really doesn't pass the smell test. But I've also seen some good work by WikiLeaks. Uh, but at the same time, isn't that what an intelligence group or a private corporate intelligence group would do? Um, you know, any double or triple agent is going to put out some good information so that the other side, whatever that side is, uh, will then start taking the bait. Right. You've got to establish your bona fide credentials, and that, that would be all part of that, to uh, give people the, uh, give the appearance that you're actually engaged in leaking information. Now, a lot of people are looking at this as the Pentagon Papers uh, redux, but... Uh, it's, it's totally different because the Pentagon Papers, there was no question as to their authenticity uh, when they were released by Dan Ellsberg. Uh, but in this case, as you mentioned, th these, th these documents are in digital form, and we know that, that the neocon stock and trade uh, is forgeries and misinformation and disinformation. And I, I would uh, be very suspicious of anything that comes in uh, over the transom in, in, in just uh, digital form. 48 hours into this, uh, you've been analyzing the way the news is covering it, or Spiegel, The Guardian, and The New York Times, and I see them trying to say, oh, look, Pakistan's working with the Taliban. I mean, out of the gates, I see it being used against Pakistan, and Pakistan is in the news today saying, we find this to be very suspicious. Well, also, you know, I noted in The, Guard uh, in the Guardian article that they went to pains to convince their readers that they paid no money to WikiLeaks for these documents, that WikiLeaks had no, no editorial control, were not involved uh, with the writing of uh, the, uh, the story, and, um, and that uh, they double-checked a lot of the information with other sources. My God, what, what are you double-checking? This information, you can double-check any major newspaper or any other news website and, and, and find out that the situation in Afghanistan and Pakistan is disastrous. So uh, we're not breaking any new ground here with these so-called revelations. Well, that's like the lithium story. 
There was a Russian report from 85. There was a 2001 and 2002 U.S. report. They knew that lithium was there. I mean, they know there's trillions of oil there. What did you make of that supposed leak that we were really there for the lithium? Well, I think that, you know, there's a lot of people that would then say, oh, well, we have to be in Afghanistan because uh, we need access to these critical national security resources. Yeah, I was very suspicious of that, as I'm suspicious of any any time uh, there's a discovery of uh, oil or some other critical natural resource like coal pan, which uh, has allowed the U.S. to increase its military presence in Central Africa.